This is your diamond insight for tonight of killing of the messengers of news. The stealing of equipment belonging to KBN television in Zambia at night and the killing of veteran Al Jazeera journalist Shireen Abu Akle in the West Bank as she was performing her duties have no other descriptions than calling them a depressing development to our media industry. Both the theft of equipment and the killing of the journalist, although in different parts of the world, have negative implications on the performance of the media. The two incidences have driven fear in the people working for the media. This is an infringement on media freedoms and the right of viewers to receive information from their preferred sources. In Zambia, there are people who are always glued to KBN television in receiving their news and current affairs. They trust its line of operations as regards its programming. But to use the cover of darkness and steel cameras, television monitors and laptops is not only theft, but also an assault on the freedom of our press. There is no doubt that investors in KBN television are frustrated and dejected. They are feeling insecure about themselves and also about reinvesting in media business. This, however, does not end there as over 100 businessmen and women have invested in media houses. If thieves are now focusing on studio equipment such as cameras and others for use in the field, which studios and companies are safe? It is important for the police to indeed quickly crack down the culprits so that they can answer for their criminal behavior. This is the only way media personnel will feel safe, not only at KBN television, but also other outlets such as Diamond TV and many more. This is the reason we feel even more depressed when we hear one of us being killed, the killing of veteran Al Jazeera journalist Shireen Abu Akle in the West Bank of Gaza is indeed a sad development in the life of journalism work. Israeli forces shot Shireen, age 51, in the face. She was covering Israeli army raids on the Janine refugee camp. As stated, this again is a violation of media freedoms and shooting a human being in the face does not point to a stray bullet. Even if an investigation is conducted, it will not bring her back and the effect of killing will continue reverberating in media personnel. Of course, fear has been pushed into the spine of media workers who always reflect on the killing before deciding whether to cover stories in the West Bank or other war-torn areas. We demand a safe environment for journalists and other media workers that will be executing their work, whether back home or in foreign territory. 